Hi, this is Steve Giordano. It may seem strange to talk about customer loyalty while mentioning the trade deficit, but that's precisely what I'm going to do. We have a trade deficit at $60 billion, I think, last year. And the fact of the matter is, we no longer lead the world in manufacturing. China passed us last March. There is one area of the economy, though, where we still enjoy a surplus. And that one area is services. It's true. Nobody so far has figured out how to beat us at retail. Think Walmart, Apple, Hollywood. However, nothing lasts forever. Think Ikea, Samsung, and Bollywood. So as long as we maintain our edge and are world class in the service experience, we'll continue to grow this and continue to maintain a surplus. The challenge? Well, all you have to do is imagine a bad service experience in your big box retailer or a fast or not so fast food restaurant, and we all have heard the stories. Here's one. You're staying at a hotel for business, and you got a big day tomorrow, so you decide you're going to work inside the hotel room and not go to a restaurant, and you order up room service real early so there's no problems, and so you phone down and you order a light dinner and you wait, and wait, and wait, and wait, and after about an hour you become concerned and you say, well, I better call since maybe they didn't get the order. And you call down and, and very politely explain and you are connected to the kitchen staff and you hear some hectic noise back there and, and you explain your situation to the guy who answers the phone, Earl. And Earl goes and looks and he says, nope, we don't have your order, never got your order. And you said, no, I really did place my order. And so at this point, Earl, rather than doing anything associated with solving your problem, he takes a one at a time survey of the entire kitchen staff. Mildred, you get the guy's order at 324? No. Virgil, how about you? You got an order from... No. Nope. I checked. We don't really have your order. Never had your order. Sorry. You know. Well, now Virgil and Earl and Mildred are happily going about their work, safe in the knowledge that their universe is balanced and they didn't do anything wrong. Okay? I have found that most customers' dissatisfaction horror stories have at the heart of it five pain points. In fact, I challenge you to come up with a customer satisfaction bad story where it doesn't contain one of these five pain points. And here they are. Number one, it ain't my fault. The person on the other end of the counter, the email, or the phone call wants you to know that whatever your problem with the company, which they have not disassociated themselves from, it isn't them. The second and associated point is if it's not my fault, it must be your fault. So they blame you. You didn't read the instructions right, or you mishandled the product, or you did something wrong, and if they can put it on you, not only is it not their fault, but they don't even feel compelled to fix it anymore. They might do it you know, as a courtesy to you, but it isn't really their fault. It's your fault. Or the third point, it's not our policy. I'd like to help you. I'm a good person. I want to help you, but our policy prohibits me from doing anything in this case, so uh, don't, don't blame me. <laughs> Fourth point, the automated attendant. This allegedly is done for your convenience, but in reality, the company does it so that they can save money, become more productive, and allegedly improve their bottom line. But if they give a bad experience, it doesn't improve the bottom line. It results in cancellations, which take away the bottom line. So it's not really helpful, especially if you get caught, like I have, and I'm sure you have, in one of those loops where you explain your entire problem and then are eventually transferred to a real person when the automated attendant can't help you, and you have to tell all the information over again. Or number five, there's nothing I can do. This is their close. I've heard your whole story, and there's nothing that can be done. We've got to end it right here. This is it. You can go to my boss if you want, but my boss can't help you either. I can't help you. We can't help you. We're done. I have found that most customer dissatisfaction has to do with one of those five pain points or, in addition to one of those five pain points, nobody followed up and got back to you. Tom Peters tells a wonderful story about the healthcare industry in his really good book, um, Little Big Things, 163 Ways to Create Excellence, and he even does a video of it on YouTube, which I urge you to watch. It's terrific. I think the title of it is uh, Kindness is Free. Anyway, he takes, talks about the healthcare industry and this giant survey that was done by this company called Press Ganey. And so Press Ganey surveys 225,000 hospitals, 139,000 patients, to determine what their level of satisfaction or dissatisfaction was with the hospital stay. Now, they come up with a thousand things, and of those thousand things, how many of them do you think had anything to do with the patient getting better or not?
The answer is none. Zero. All of their concerns had to do with the way they interacted with the staff. Did they receive kindness? Were they treated respectfully? And I found this astounding. We want kindness and don't get it in some cases in a fast food experience, and that's not life or death. This is life or death, and yet still, the most important thing to us isn't the illness, it's the interaction. That's true in business, too. It is seldom about the product. Sure, the product breaks down, but we can forgive that as long as the interaction, while we're attempting to fix whatever the product isn't doing, is positive and we're treated with kindness and respect. See, this story helps me understand that it isn't overly complicated. Sure, it's complicated to execute, but knowing what to do is not complicated. I teach a 90-minute course on creating customer loyalty and teaching your leaders how to create a customer loyalty culture. And I use my strategy of three A's. And the three A's very briefly stand for apologize, be accountable, and be their agent. At the end of 90 minutes, your people walk away with implementable solutions and tactics that they can use the next day that don't cost anything and help to create customer loyalty. I find it amazing that millions of dollars are spent on marketing and promotion to bring in new customers when cancellations account for all the customers we could possibly want if we were just able to save those sales. I urge you to start increasing productivity today. Hit the link on the email or visit me at the customer loyalty page at trainwinrepeat.com and let me help you create a customer loyalty culture. Thank you for your focus on the customer and thank you for listening to me today.